West End Gin. West End Gin, baby. You're from Louisville originally, right? I am. What got you in to the field? You know, everything's about timing, right? Yes, yeah. Even with this, like five years ago, we were talking about gin and probably be like, come on, come on. Uh huh. Yep. Do bourbon here. That's correct. A, a lot of, <laughs> I have a lot of serendipitous correct. moments in my life. You know, people are like, why'd you get into gin? I love, one, I love gin, but I also love foundationally being able to make something with different botanicals that yeah. have different properties in them. Like, I just, there's something about that. What type of method are they kind of using? Are they doing like that, like steep method, kind of like tea bags type of thing? Like no, don't do that one. Definitely do the vapor. Okay. okay. So we, we do the vapor. Uh, so it sits in a vapor basket right on top. We put our batch together of our botanicals into a basket, and then it's vapor distilled into the, the into the dissolute. I'm going to pour myself another gin here. I, I was literally going to stop you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, I'm not saying it's because it's mine. I'm out. It is good, man. I'm telling you, it is. Um, well, do we want to try this rose gin? Man, you should. Our <laughs> other founder in this business is my wife, Dr. Don Wade. And uh, when we were making the expressions, the expressions took about, you know, for us to get to this point is about five years. Right. The first expression came with the OG, which is the one that we had. And then the second expression is foundationally the same one. The mm -hmm. difference is the fenugreek and the roses. Right. And when I tell you, it is so well put together. Her and a friend, Crystal Haynes, put that together. And when I tell you, it's so delicious. I get more people ask me about this expression than the OG. And yeah. I, I personally love the OG. This one's like a dedication to our mothers. Our right? mother. It's a dedication to the women yeah. that you know did everything for you don't get the credit mm. well you got that right yeah it's, <laughs> this is an opportunity to give credit where credit is due That's excellent. you know what i mean yeah. so i think that this expression expresses that in a lot of ways you worked a long time on like trying to find yeah. the right blend what was that process for you when blending your own gin together what was that like how long did it take how many renditions? How much? How drunk did you get on yeah, tasting how many, it? How many yeah. uh, different samples were you trying? Yeah. It's literally <laughs> the five years leading up to it is really thinking to yourself, man, this is possible. Right. Like you're in the epicenter. It's like if you want to get into tech, where you go? You got to Silicon Valley. Valley. That's if right. you want to get into the spirits business, to grow, it's, it's like a good place to be. You feel like Steve Jobs. You're like, oh shit, I was born in it. Like, <laughs> that's right. I'm here. Like, you're in the epicenter, the industry, and is, you can make it in your garage. You can make it in your. <laughs> it's not bathtub gin, but it's but it's close. Steve Jobs. Hey, make it in the garage. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> kind of how most of it started. <laughs> Look at Brian and his callback. <laughs> but it's you're in the, you're in the middle of the industry. Like, this is like if you want to get into the spirit industry, like this is it. So all the industry is here. So being able to take that time to say, you know, you can, we can do this here. And to do it in a product that really should be made here mm. in Kentucky, when you think about Seagram's and their history, right. especially in Louisville, like a lot of people don't understand that Seagram's yeah. was in the West End. That's right. It existed in the, all the bumpy face yeah. that everybody is sick off of, that they no longer want to drink gin. It came from Kentucky, right? Mm. So it turned a lot of people off, but it also turned a lot of people on. Like, hey, listen, this is an opportunity. Right. So when you think about gin and bourbon, like, and you think about Louisville in particular in Kentucky, gin should be made here. Was there anybody or how many people went to you and was like, Stacy, you're crazy, man. What are you doing? You're trying to make gin. Like, we, we're here for brown spirits. This is Kentucky. This is what we do. How many people are like clear spirits? Nobody calls Stacy crazy. Do it. <laughs> like, was. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny you saying that? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> they. When you get a track record, nobody <laughs> thinks you're crazy. There you go. Right? There you go. <laughs> I like that. But that's why you have to have people around you that, that will tell you, hey, listen, let me slow you down just a little bit. Yeah. So you don't just jump out the window. The only thing people were like, hey, I don't know about that, is that the expression, the iconography that's in that's a part of the product is all based around Quinn Chapel Church. They okay. did yeah. say five years, let's see, 2018, 2017, people, when you tell people, hey, I want to base it in a church. They'll tell you, no, nah, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. like, I, don't, I don't know if people are ready for that. All right. Fast forward, what well, you got? A man at uh, Heaven's Door up here. Yeah, that's right. Everybody's doing it now. Oh, but back oh, then, man, it was like, like yeah, Bob wait. Dylan has his own damn, like, uh, they like, were like, don't do a, that. It's got a party in a yeah, church now, man. experience in a church. They were like, right. don't do that. A couple people, one being my cousin, we have music conversations all the time, and we're like, man, you know what's missing is like, 
the church sound is like missing from music. So that bigness and that oh, yeah. emotional yeah. piece is kind of missing. So a lot of that emotion is kind is in you know the conversation we're having is missing in music. But when you think about spirits, you don't really equate that to that because everybody's yeah. like, let, let's put it to spirits. If you have bourbon, somebody's gonna say, you know, I don't, I want to take you to do this, and I'm like, well, I bought the juice. <laughs> So the, the emotion of it, like the hands on, the craftness is gone. Right. So like that doesn't exist. And that emotion, that tied to it is not there. Like a real craftsman, like yeah. is not tied to it. The story is there. And the story can be great, but the product isn't crafted. There's a lot of premium gins, but there's not a lot of craft gins. Mm -hmm. And that's a difference. You guys had an idea to make it more, um, to make it more inviting. To, to, the, to the, the regular person. And so you went with a really citrus forward approach. Dude. And, uh, it's killer too, man. I think it worked out, man. It, it, it is so smooth and it's kind of plays this hopscotch between a London dry mm. and a modern contemporary gin, yeah. which is more citrus forward. Yeah. It just has a vibe to it. It's, it's really smooth. You can sip it just like a tequila almost, there which is what I like to do. Yeah, sure. You know this. <laughs> uh, or you can do a, a Spanish sipping uh, gin and tonic or just a regular gin and tonic and build your botanicals, whatever you want to do. But it's so smooth. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're drinking here is just a little bit different than your normal gin and tonic. It's, it's almost identical as regular gin and tonic. The one twist was is the orange. Uh, we did that orange uh twist to it on here and let me tell you it's it really does because of the citrus yeah it pops. Uh, so much it's citrus good. in it uh i like it much more than doing your normal lime absolutely uh, in, yeah. in this gin and tonic just because of that that citrus and the orange just gives a little something so good I, I did just there, use yeah. regular I mean, lime juice in it as the base also so a lot of people like lime we like the oranges mm. it's made with you know bitter orange and sweet orange so it's got grapefruit, lemon peel, lemongrass. So a lot of those citrus, it just comes, it, it comes alive, especially when you put really great ice on top of it. It just comes up. Just getting into kind of the West End idea, because we do have we do have listeners outside of Louisville, um, and I did kind of want to bring bring us back just to talk about the West End of Louisville. You know, I know uh, on your I think it was on your website you said every, every city has a West End. Yeah, man. Can you just get into like the history of the West End from your perspective and uh, what West End Gen is doing? to assist out there a little bit. You know, I always look at it this way. There, there is a West End everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're from the West End, Newburgh, South End, J-Town, it doesn't matter. That's Those right. these, these pockets exist everywhere we're at, and I've grown up around these pockets my entire life. It doesn't matter if you're in the, the hills. Right. If you're, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at. There is a pocket that exists. These are disenfranchised people. These are people that have been forgotten about. Mm -hmm. I mean, that base exist it is there everywhere you go not it's just everywhere. the west end but it right. is literally everywhere so for me when you think about the west end let's take just the geographical conversation sure. of the west end like why can't the west end have a luxury gen the same way plymouth has plymouth yeah right this is the exact like that can exist like we have a very unique property in kentucky which is the water Right. Like I've done the run ups other places and I won't name those those states, but I've done a run up just from a, just from looking at steels, trying to bring a steel yeah. in. It's the water man. So why not make a luxury premium gin, the juxtaposition of having a luxury premium gin that exists in the West End where it absolutely should exist in the community. When you think about 60,000 people that live in the West End. The benefit of what was it nine billion dollars that came in last year 13 billion yeah. that's coming in this year out of the 13 billion that's coming in this year less than a fraction will ever come past ninth street that's right yeah i'm talking about a fraction of a fraction will ever go Absolutely. past ninth street right ever since we launched the response has been incredible like we've had great response uh and it's not because of I mean, you like to believe it's because of you, but I really believe it's because of the product. The product really is fucking smooth. It's delicious. Yes. It's really good. It's not like we we work really hard to make a differentiate, like a line of delineation between other gins in the market. We wanted it to stand on its own, and mm -hmm. it tastes like it stands on its own, and it should exist in one of the greatest neighborhoods in Kentucky, which is the West End. Like when you think about industry. Especially bourbon. Listen, there's no bourbon. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> it is foundationally like 
it makes the most sense yeah, for sure. it to exist there. The support is there. I think what has to happen is you got to actionize. Like, this is rooted in calls and steeped in American history. And the fact that it's rooted in the calls and the calls being impacting communities that need it most, of course, you got to, the action has to show up. So it can't just be, okay, we're going to do a distillery here. Because quite frankly, I mean, anybody can do that. Right. But I think when you have, when you put the dollars back, that's when you start to see the real impact of the economic, the economics around an industry. It's not just a drink. And that's why we called it West End Industries PBC. It's a public benefit corporation. It's completely different. There's a lot that's, that can still be done down there. I think I, where people it's, get it's it, amazing. Where people get it fucked up is they think that, oh, it's West End and you're not a part of that community. Guess what, guys? <laughs> This is our community. That's all, right. It's all of our community. It's everybody. Like it you live here, this is your community. Right. That's right. Like I, I have heard people is like, oh, it's it's scary to go down there. It's not. Sc- it's only scary no. to go down there if you feel scared. Like go that's down the there narrative. and just be a freaking human, man. Like that, go down dude, and exactly just love it. one it's another. And it's a narrative that is wrong. It is. <laughs> and when you think about it, and you think about the industry that exists down there and the work that's being done, come on, man. How can you not want to be a part of it? Listen, what separates us from Atlanta? When you think about those two cities, the reason why we're not as far ahead as we should be is because we don't have a black middle class. And it's something that we have to fix. But you got to be able to have the economics have to be in the communities for it to happen. When I was a kid, you went to the West End, you had a flower shop. Mm -hmm. It was owned by the people who lived there. All the homes were owned by the people who lived there. Think about when you were kids. Everybody owned the homes. The community was giving back to itself down there. The dollar stayed longer. Yeah. So this is uh, available in Louisville now. Uh, you have plans to start distributing elsewhere? Yeah, we want to do uh, Georgia, Tennessee. I mean, obviously, Indiana is right here. So sure. you, you got to have that because it's just there. But yeah, not, yeah. but you're not going into Indianapolis. So that's why. Yeah, you're just going to New Albany. That's why I'm pulling it <laughs> Nobody's down. Nobody's going to Indianapolis. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm pulling it down to, like, just a local level. Yeah. Atlanta, Nashville. Right. Jeffersonville. Sure. You know, uh, St. Louis. You know, pull it into something that's more manageable. It. Yeah. As opposed to, let me get the whole state. Because the whole state is going to fuck up your pricing. Yeah, because there's places that this is not going to work. And right. they're going to want to discount you. I'm not discounting. Yeah. This is the price. It's just not supposed to be there. It's supposed right. to be here. It's not in that, it's not in that market. Yeah. You yeah. got to get to the right market. It's got to be in the right place. And Love speaking it. of that price... Good price. Thank you. Thirty nine ninety nine. I wanted to go crazy with the price. I won't lie to you. And a dollar of every people. bottle goes back to support communities. Yes. That's amazing. All community. All community. Yeah. Goes That's back. just awesome. Yeah. We're focused. We gave uh, our first check of $10,000. We gave it to uh, the West End Boys School. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's so great. So we donated, it. we donated the profits uh, straight to the West End Boys School. So it's going right back, and it's all staying in the community, and that's the best part right now is, like, if we're buying the gin right now, money is still staying in the community. You're local, been here. Yep. Wife's local, been yep. here. It's still all of it staying right here right now. Yeah, we so try. Still uh, giving back and still building the West End. Mm-hmm.